Incurable or just nonspecific? I'm Dr. Trish Lee, and this topic has me fired up right now. So I'm here to share with you the difference between an incurable chronic illness or one that's nonspecific, which means your doctor doesn't know what to do with it. So in this video, we are going to talk about the difference between incurable and nonspecific or without a cause. Then I'm going to talk about a brain pattern that is at the core of chronic illness. And it is a driving force in many factors that people struggle with over a long time. And then of course, number three, I'm gonna give you a brain hack so that you can get to the solution. So let's dig in. Incurable or nonspecific, what's the difference? Someone said to me, very nice woman who I think I'm gonna spend some time with soon in her QEG brain map, um, said to me, I have this incurable dis disease. And I'm like, okay, what is that? And she described it to me and I'm like, did they tell you it was incurable? And she's like, no, they said it's nonspecific. And I'm like, whoa, 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 lovingly, let me challenge the framework on this one. And that's what I'm gonna do for you here is that just because a doctor, your doctor doesn't know what causes something and doesn't know what to do with it does not make it not curable. I'm gonna say that again. So if you're told you have nonspecific X, X problem or disease, or if you are told this is your diagnosis and I'm not sure what's causing it, that doesn't mean it's not curable. It doesn't mean that's even it, just so you know. And this is something I help people with, so I'm a little fired up about it, but I'm fired up because if I told you the number of diagnoses that I have been handed over the last two years, it would blow your mind. And I already have planned a, play, a playlist on chronic illness, and I'm going to outline all of the diagnoses that I've been told that I have for no reason. So I was told I have Sjogren's syndrome, dry eyes and dry mouth. I said to the doctor, why would I have Sjogren's syndrome? And they're like, oh, that's a disease that has no known cause. And something has to be causing it. I can't have a disease with no cause. So the, the operative word there is no known cause. Your doctor doesn't know. So in my case, it was neurotoxin poisoning. I would argue in many people's cases, it's unknown neurotoxin poisoning or neurotoxin exposure. So I'm gonna make this playlist of all the things that I was diagnosed with, but you know me, right? You've met me. So I'm sitting in these doctor's appointments and you know, doctors see me coming, I'm sure they're like, oh no, it's gotta be in my record. This one's not gonna believe the diagnosis that she's given. The eye doctor, I have had a corneal ulcer in my eye. That one was very painful and I had to have it um, remediated. I had all these eye problems and I actually still need to reach out to this doctor and tell him he's a very nice guy, super nice. I like him, except for he did me wrong, hardcore over the course of five years because he kept telling me that it's contact dermatitis for no known reason. It's my makeup. I'm like, dude, I use the same makeup for 10 years. It's clean makeup, it's organic. There's no way this is doing it to me. Like you have to tell me something that makes relative sense so that I can try to figure this out, but handing me up all these diagnoses with no known cause. And that is the case for so many people. So no known cause does not mean incurable. So I help people with diagnoses that you wouldn't think I could help people with. And this is the reason we're gonna move on to number two, is that we know, I now know, that many chronic illnesses, if they're not caused by neurotoxin poison, they're fueled by it. And so there's many issues that people have because of something throwing their nervous systems off. When there's some type of virus or toxin, what can happen is bacteria, what can happen is your system then has to go on red alert to fight off the constant bombardment from whatever thing is attacking it. 
And when it does that, it creates something that's called autonomic nervous system dysfunction, which I am on the tail end of recovering from, thankfully. Autonomic nervous system dysfunction is one of sympathetic dominance. Sympathetics is fight or flight. Parasympathetics is rest and digest. So basically, if there's an onslaught of something that is making your system tipped and unbalanced, then your system is constantly looking for, in a hypervigilant way, what it needs to protect itself from. So that can be physical, mental, or emotional. So if you're in an emotionally abusive relationship and you never know what you're gonna get from your partner, that creates autonomic nervous system dysfunction because you can never let your guard down because your, your emotional environment is unsafe. If you mentally are always stressed out and your work is very, very stressful, that can create autonomic nervous dysfunction because mentally there's toxins that are coming in all the time, creating this autonomic nervous system dysfunction. So for example, Bell's palsy is something I help a lot of people with. Bell's palsy is either always or partially caused by sympathetic dominance. It's definitely a factor. And so when I see sympathetic dominance in the brain, I can help optimize that sympathetic dom dominance, get more parasympathetics going in life through resting and digesting and help a person to be able to ward off that autonomic nervous system dysfunction. I've included in my assessments now, assessments for neurotoxins. So we can break that down together because most doctors are not looking for that. So something now I'm moving into is clinical neurotoxicology. Toxins that are bombarding our nervous systems and creating autonomic nervous system dysfunction and giving people a whole host of health problems that they don't know are caused by something physically throwing them into constant fight or flight. That's the case with me. The neurotoxins that I was being exposed to were in the air in my home. And with every breath, I was toxifying myself. With every moment my eyes were open, neurotoxins can enter your system through your eyes, through your skin, and mostly through breathing. And I had a lot of eye problems because it was coming in my eyes. But my doctors didn't know that. But that doesn't mean it's incurable. I'm in the midst of curing myself. So what is the cure? The cure is to see what your brain is doing and you have to figure out if there's something physical, mental, or emotional that's coming into your nervous system to create the autonomic nervous system dysfunction that we will see in your QEG brain map. That's the assessment that I do. That's the brain rewire assessment. And if you don't know about the physical environment, you have to look. And I have affordable ways to look. I've learned them in my own journey. Affordable ways to look at your environment, affordable ways to look into your system. And when we do this, we can rule out physical, mental, or emotional causes. Then we have to know which one, if one, and what could be all of them, that is perpetuating the autonomic nervous system dysfunction. We can use neurofeedback coaching, neurofeedback and coaching, to take your brain out of autonomic nervous system dysfunction into the optimal mode. Then I have to teach you how to keep your brain there. So the way I use neurofeedback is I use the technology to unconsciously guide your brain into the healthier mode. But then in coaching, you and I look at the subconscious things that are flying under the radar and the conscious issues that you know of, plus the physical aspect, and we find the healthy way for you to create a balanced life into the future so that your system comes out of autonomic nervous system dysfunction, sympathetics decrease, parasympathetics increase, and you keep a balanced brain and life for the rest of your life. And you know what that creates? It creates happiness, joy, purpose. You get to go out into the world, kick some butt, and rock out your best life. You can get out of this downward spiral. I can help you create an upward spiral. 
And I'm trying to in these videos, but if you have a chronic illness that you have been dealing with for a long time, it usually requires an individualized approach. So my New Year's resolution is to tell people I'm here to help you individually. Get into the assessment. Stay here on this channel so that you can learn more and more about it. But if you want personal help, that's how I can personally help, help you. So go to drtrishley.com, check it out, and I can help you get out of chronic illness, anxiety, attention, and addiction issues. The key is in your brain. The problem started there and it can end there. And it would be my great pleasure to help you. Okay, I hope this video helps you. And as always, control your brain or it'll control you.